morning we'll be working on the Pontiac. Uh, I went through my video. There we go. Went through my videos and uh, trying to determine when's the last time I worked on this car. And it was back in, in uh, June. If you go through my videos, you'll see in June I replaced the fuel pump assembly and the fuel filter. And I made a, a video about that experience. <laughs> and in that, uh, in that video, um, I talked about how to use the, uh, the fuel line to disconnect. There's like a tool on the, on the fuel line to disconnect the fuel filter. Well, in modern modern vehicles, there's a lot of different types of uh, fuel or line connect and uh, you know different quick connect fittings, and there's an assortment of tools available to uh, to address those. You know, anywhere anything from cooling system lines, fuel lines, uh, transmission lines, and the sort. It's just. Oh, uh, it's just the way things are nowadays, you know, you know, to uh, expedite uh, the assembly process. Of course, if you're put, if you're building a car, you're not worried about who's got to fix it. <laughs> so, I mean, these, these fittings were designed and, and, and made to expedite uh, the manufacturing process. So, I actually did a similar repair to this a little over a year ago and um, on one of these, these uh, cooling line fittings. And uh, the one that was already there was, you know, wasn't leaking, so I just left it alone. But uh, yesterday, my wife coming across the pass, um, had to stop a couple times and, and, and add water. And we've been losing coolant. And just like the last time I did this, I could never really pinpoint a leak because it wasn't obvious. It wasn't pouring on the ground. And it wasn't, you know, there was no evidence underneath the hood of a leak. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you what where the leak was occurring and how I came across it. But let me show you the culprit. Dang. There we go. That's the culprit right there. That <coughs> There's a quick, a push quick connect. This is the, the little plastic barb that uh, hooks onto the, the metal line. There's a metal line on the engine. And this is to the, to the uh, this goes to the, um, the heater core. So where my hand is, that gets connected to a rubber line that goes through the bulkhead into the heater core that's inside. That's when you turn the heat on. Yeah. Anyway, this this snaps into a metal line on the engine. And there's two of these. There's one that goes from the engine to the heater core and then one from the heater core back to the engine. And they're the, they're the same. The same size as far as I know. <coughs> okay. Now here's the problem. This broke off. Now this goes into a rubber line where there's a spring clamp you know, conventional metal clamp. Um, and then, you know, but when, when the car is built, I'm suspecting, I don't know, because I didn't never worked on an assembly line, but I'm assuming that those rubber lines were on the chassis as it came down the line. And as the, uh, the K member with the engine and, trans, and transaxle that was installed came up to meet the car, uh, a tech, you know, a, a person on the line reached in there and snap, snap those two lines on, and it continued down the line. That's what I suspect. But anyway, these are plastic, and uh, this plastic, you can see that. I need to get an HD camera. Um, this plastic gets really, really brittle with age. I mean, Trust me, it just gets brittle with age. I don't have a pair of pliers right here handy, but I mean, you yeah, know, just it just gets really brittle. And what I suspect happened is where this necks down. I don't know if you can see that, but 
where this necks down, it just the weight of, and the vibration of that rubber line over time, it just put a small crack in there and it it would <clears throat> over, you know, over a period of time, it would leak out sm slowly and just drip, 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 drip. And then as the crack got bigger, the, the, the leak would get progressively worse to the point where um, my wife had to put, I, I keep generally, I keep a couple, at least a couple gallons of, of water in the trunk of the car just in case uh, something like that were to happen you blow blow a hose or something it's just a matter of doing a quick patch and getting back on the road but it got bad enough where she went through over two gallons of stuff and she, by the time she got home the, the thing was just about dry so what we're gonna do I'm gonna show you now these you can't get these I don't I don't know I haven't tried but I'm, I'm suspecting these are dealer dealer only items and they're probably pretty expensive and you don't need them you know you just don't need them um and i'll and i'll show you what i'm talking about so this is a really easy fix it's uh it's a harder thing to diagnose my car has just gone over two hundred thousand miles and i don't care what anybody says you know some people say well, why do you keep driving that piece of crap look the paints the clear coat's peeling off it i could put more i can repaint it you know, I live in the desert southwest, we don't get any rust, so, and virtually, I, I mean literally, any bolt on that car I can take off, it isn't going to break off like if it were in Michigan. <laughs> but my goal is to keep, and don't tell my wife I said this, but my goal is to keep this car on the road until my kids are at least five. So that's at least three more years. So this car is probably going to have, by the time I take, by the time I retire it or replace it and get my wife something else to drive it's probably going to have close to 350,000 miles on it but I want to see how long I keep this thing going I'm just not going to sell it I'm just going to keep fixing it and keep it on the road see how long I can keep this thing before it just falls apart but this is gone so, let me show you. Back behind the coil packs, back between the, the uh, bulkhead or the firewall and uh, the engine, is where you're going to find these metal lines for the cooling system. And that's where those uh, plastic quick connects are. Now on those metal lines, there's a there's a raised rib, and that's what that quick connect uh, grabs onto. That's what that little plastic piece, um, that locking ring, that's what it, that attached to, and that's what keeps the line connected to the quick connect. That makes an excellent spot to push the uh, the, the rubber hose over, and then use that as a uh, a barb for the for a, a hose clamp. So, <laughs> if those things go bad, just take them off, throw them in the trash, and then push the rubber hose right over the metal line and put a, put a stainless steel hose clamp on it. Fixed. I don't know how, you, how well you can see this, but here's the, the uh, rubber line that I was talking about. And right where my index finger is is where that metal line is. And that rubber line has that quick connect attached to it and then, then just get snapped onto that rubber line. Well you can just push that that rubber line over this hose, over this steel line. Um, if you put a little bit of uh, anti-seize or Vaseline or something, even a little bit of motor oil just to lubricate this metal line a little bit to get the rubber line to go over it and push it about a uh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch beyond that little rib and then put a spring clamp or uh, a stainless steel hose clamp on the, on the rubber line and your fix is complete. And the other thing is, is that there's a series of plastic vacuum lines and you want to make sure that all that stuff is <laughs> reinstalled where they need to be otherwise you're going to probably end up tripping a trouble light or a service engine light code. So make sure all that stuff's plugged back in and then the, your, your fix is pretty much complete. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's a 
light is so horrid. All right, that's more better. Come on. All right. Let's see, here's here's the line I was talking about, and that's see that that raised rib right there. That's what that quick connect attaches to. See if. I've already done this repair once right there and you can see all that that uh, that crud that's laying on the line that's how I that's how I diagnose this it was leaking and uh, it was leaking onto the hose beneath it come on light and uh, that's how I was able to pinpoint it there's some elk the, the water is very high in alkali out here and I don't I don't use uh, distilled water. I spend as little money as I have to on this car. But uh, so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna put this hose back on. Come on light. I'm gonna put this hose back on, put the clamp on it, and then I'm gonna flush this thing. Let me show you what I'm talking about why I want to flush it. Look down inside there, that's all goopy, nasty. Looks like mud. So what I'm going to do today is re just replace that or get rid of that plastic fitting, put that hose clamp on, and, and that's that's a simple fix. <laughs> it's probably not the way the manual says to do it, but screw the manual. It's 200,000 miles on this car, and I've been driving this thing for two years. Oil changes, gases, and, and a, you know a couple of little minor fixes you had to do anyway. And so anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna flush some of the crud out of the system and uh, put some fresh Dex Cool in it because that's what it calls for. Yeah, that's a pretty simple fix. So um, yeah, here we are back again with these quick connect fittings and. <laughs> Probably a good idea if your car's got over 100,000 miles is just to go over it and look, you know, all these vacuum lines on this car are, are plastic lines. They're hard plastic lines and they get pushed into a, a flexible rubber uh, connection where they ever they connect to another hose or a, a sensor. And a lot of times if you, if you get a little bit of an oil leak anywhere in that engine, yeah, that oil will attack those rubber parts. I had this on my 85, where the the, the uh, rubber fitting, the connection fitting, <laughs> it's just a, a press on fit. And the rubber swelled up so far that it wouldn't, the, the line, this was a, a, it's cold. It was part of the EVAP system. And it was, uh, I think it was the vacuum line that activated the, the EVAP canister. And it would leak around that that rubber fitting because the oil had swollen it up so much it wouldn't even it wouldn't even grab the hard rubber line. <laughs> Before I get to working on this, I'm gonna put some more clothes on. Okay. 